in on so many of my friends on the Atlantic seaboard. Boy, and I'm hearing from them right and left. I've got family in Florida, and as I've mentioned before, a lot of friends in Jacksonville and, and in Charleston and whatnot. There's a lot of concerns about what's going to happen to their homes and what's going to happen, frankly, when they come back. Scott Major joins us now. He's a national disaster insurance expert and author. Scott, without a doubt, we've seen the problems that have happened to people. Hurricane Katrina comes to mind. There have been other disasters having to do with even mudslides and tornadoes. And then, of course, that's different for policies. But we've seen what it's like for those people to try to recover, especially we can recall recently with Hurricane Sandy, or wasn't really Superstorm Sandy, what that did to so many people. So you can imagine a lot of people are on edge. Yeah, it's a terrible situation having been through physically 10 hurricanes on my own and having Uh. done extensive work with post-Katrina, post-Sandy, post-Wilma, there is a substantial amount of damage that's going to be done, and the success of individuals is going to be, and their businesses, is going to be in their ability to prepare and to take steps both before and after the hurricane. Yeah, so how do you prepare before that? What can people do? Do they need to have photographs and stuff of their house and whatnot? Excellent, yes. The answer is that the first thing you want to do, if you have time, is to call your insurance broker or your insurance agent and make sure you have proper coverage, understand what your coverage is, whether it covers both the exterior as well as the interior. Some people have something called contents coverage, which covers damage to furniture and art and things inside clothing and stuff like that. You want to make sure you understand exactly what that is. In addition to that, you want to take pictures or video of every single aspect of your house inside and out. And what that means is going around and taking pictures of clothing or art or furniture, as well as the structures itself inside and out, your ceilings, your roofs, your outdoor windows and things like that, even trees, so that if there is damage afterward, you have a documentation an actual video or uh, picturesque documentation that can be used with the insurance company. It's extremely compelling. Yeah, and was that the problem? As you said, you know, you've worked with people, you were in 10 hurricanes yourself. Is that the problem with most people? They don't have that, I would assume, right? That's correct. Most people don't read their insurance policies. They're not even sure what their insurance policies say, you know, because insurance policies are essentially a group of exclusions telling you what's not covered and a very small amount of information that is covered. So most people just assume, oh, I've got coverage for if my house blows down or if there's a window damage, and they may not realize there may be high deductibles or there may be damages which require proof. And if you haven't done video or picture evidence and actually document these things, then you may have problems with having the insurance company say to you, we're not really sure that you can prove that this damage occurred, you know, before the storm or after the storm. And so these pictures and videos are so quintessentially important to making sure you have a good insurance claim. And this is all before the hurricane starts, because there's another set of factors that you engage in afterward. But it's really important if you think about just protecting your assets and protecting and making a record, a snapshot of what's your property and what your personal items are in before the hurricane starts. All right, we're talking to Scott Major, insurance expert, especially focusing on this hurricane, this event that's coming down, like I said, bearing down on the East Coast. Okay, so after the event, then what do you do? First thing that you want to do is to make sure that you notify your insurance companies and your agents. And there's a big understanding that needs to be made to the listeners, and that is calling your insurance broker, your agent, doesn't always constitute notification. If you have a GEICO insurance policy or a state farm or an all-state insurance policy, you call that number that is on the back of your policy or on your card, and you notify them directly. Your agents can help you, but you need to notify the insurance company directly because oftentimes first in, first out. So you want to immediately call if you have damage because they'll start your claim soon. And you can imagine there are thousands and thousands. And in the case of like Sandy and Katrina, there were hundreds of thousands of claims. You want to get online first. The next thing you want to do is to check and see if there's any government relief available. Lots of times FEMA and other government agencies will be called into action when the national 
declaration of an emergency occurs. So oftentimes the governor will reach out to the president and try to get a declaration. If that occurs, you're entitled to immediate monies separate and apart from those monies that go through the insurance company. And there's a number of different options there. You also want to go back out and take pictures of what the damage is, just like you did before. You want to make sure that you document, hey, here's the damage now so I can show the insurance companies or their agents before and after pictures or video that clearly delineate exactly what the problems are. The next thing to do is to get multiple estimates. So you don't want to have your friend Fred, you know, come and write an (laughs) estimate for you. You want to call a couple of roofing companies or a couple of landscaping companies or a couple of companies that are going to fix general contractors, whoever those experts are, that will come and give you estimates so that you can go to the insurance company and say, hey, I've got a whole package here for you. I've got my pictures before. I've got my pictures afterward. I've got a couple of independent experts that have come Mm. out and done an estimate. I don't care which one that you choose, but I need this to get done. And the last two things I would say are you want to make sure that you continually write. Sometimes just making a phone call, even though it's recorded, doesn't give you a good record of what occurred. So when you find out who the adjuster is, they'll often have an email address, and most things go electronically now, you start writing them. Every day, every week, what's the status of my claim? When is an adjuster coming out to visit me? When am I going to be paid? Are there any delays? If there's any delays, please write me and specifically tell me what delays there are. You know, when are you going to issue my check? You know, and so forth and so on, so that you have a documented record of one, two, ten, twenty. I tell my clients twenty to fifty letters. So the insurance company realizes, hey, we better either get rid of this claim or we may face some adverse consequences at the end. And finally, you need to decide, do you want to have an expert to help you? And that is, do you want to retain a public adjuster or a lawyer or another representative that can come and step in between and sort of facilitate their claim? And those two individuals, and when you talk about public adjusters and lawyers, they're both equally competent and they handle different things. An adjuster is more before litigation and can help you to understand exactly how to process the claim. And oftentimes they're adjusters themselves, and so they know how to speak the lingo, but they can't do what lawyers do in the sense that they can't file suits and they can't put pressure on the insurance companies in the same way. Usually the differences between hiring them are ones of cost. A public adjuster might be less expensive, might be 10% of whatever you recover, whereas an attorney might be more. The offset to that is that if you hire an attorney in most states, particularly, let me take Florida, for example, you have the ability to sue the insurance company if they don't pay, and then essentially your lawyer's free because the insurance company has to pay the lawyer as well as pay the entire claim. And so you have to make good decisions on what experts you choose and make sure that the people who repair your home are certified do have the expertise, do have licenses, do have insurance. A lot of times they'll, they'll come around and they don't have insurance, and if they do a defective job, you've got no remedy against them. So these are important considerations that every single homeowner and business owner should do. And, and I might just add that this equates and, and actually applies to both individuals and business owners. So if you have a business, you want to engage in the same tactical warfare, if you will, you know, in preparation before and after, so that you have the same sort of documentary evidence and you've notified the insurance companies in the same way. And oftentimes in business environments, there's different insurance, such as insurance that will cover when your workers can't work, business interruption insurance, or mm-hmm. if there's damages and other things that is separate apart than a typical homeowners or condominium policy that is really looking to cover the structure and the content itself. So those are good examples of great techniques that you will absolutely succeed, having handled thousands and thousands of these claims and given testimony virtually all over the country after these storms and helped cities, counties, states, as well as individuals and businesses. I can tell you that that is the way to successfully get paid for a claim and to prepare yourself to give yourself the best chance for the quickest resolution. Yeah, so uh, what you said, that takes a lot of work and tenacity, and you just have to be prepared for that, right, Scott? There's no doubt about that, and that's where you have to start thinking about if, in fact, you do take your pictures beforehand and you're going to take your pictures afterward, whether or not, hey, this is too much for me, I'd like to get an expert attorney or I'd like to get an adjuster involved to help me out to process that claim. I would mention that if you do get any kind of expert like a public adjuster or a lawyer, I would make sure that 
You get specific writings from them that tell you what specifically they're going to do, what kind of timelines they're going to give you to make sure that somebody doesn't just step in and then just try to get any money because they're getting a little percentage and run. So you want to make sure they'll delineate just the same way the insurance company will in writing. And if they don't, you write them the same way. And, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And so if you're persistent with your insurance company and you have the right experts in place, you're much more likely to get insurance claims paid faster and you're much more likely to get more money. Yeah. We, we have like 40 seconds left, but are they ever going to solve this solution in Long Island? It's terrible. It's awful. You know, when I was up there testifying and giving evidence before committees, I can tell you that the biggest problem they have is that, you know, they don't have a good disbursement formula for how to get these monies to the people quicker. And then organizations in cities and counties across the country have to think about hurricane preparedness and better ways to manage their risk so that we can get quicker resolution of claims and quicker people Mm. to the site to help remedy these problems before they become so lengthy and impossible that they become, you know, a nightmarish to people. Mm, No kidding. Scott Major, thanks so much. We'll have you back on again. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Stay with us. Coming up next, we're going to our mailbag here on ATN. Riders on the storm Riders on the storm Into this house we're born